Angela Gittens. Please join me in welcoming the 57th governor of the great state of New York, Governor Kathy Hochul. Hello, everyone. What a wonderful, wonderful day this is. I have to tell you, I feel right at home. As Lieutenant Governor for seven years, there was not a single week that I was not on a Delta flight at least once, sometimes four or five times a week. So thank you for taking such good care of me. Uh, it was always a very enjoyable experience, and so it's a great pleasure to meet our CEO, who it turns out uh, spent some time in the town right next door to mine in western New York, right where the Buffalo Bills play, so I presume he's a Bills fan. Uh, Ed Bastian, I want to thank you for uh, this opportunity, a clear signal of your confidence of better days to come, and I thank you for that. Rick Cotton, what can I say about this extraordinary leader, uh, a legend in his own time, not in his own mind, in his own time to let people know that there are great opportunities to be seized upon and how leadership truly does make a difference. And I want to thank him for everything he has done. Jeff Linford, the Port Authority Vice Chairman, always right there making sure the decisions are smart and are good and a great a regional approach. So thank you, Jeff, as well. I know we also have Angela uh, Gittens here. Angela, where are you? Angela's right there from Schiphol, USA. She's the chair of the U JFK IAT. Thank you for all your support. We have some of our assembly members here. My great friends, Assembly Member Stacy Pfeffer Amato. Amato is right here. Assembly Member Alicia Hinman is here. Hinman is here. And also, I don't know if Donovan Richards is here. He's coming any second. He's going to slide in, but I know he will not miss this. And I do believe that we may be having a special appearance from Congressman Greg Meeks. If the planes are on time, and I can't, I, I don't know how to say. Uh, but he's flying up from some important business in Washington, but he has been an integral part of this process from the very beginning. So why we are here today? Well, this certainly is JFK week. Just a couple days ago, we made a major announcement about transforming Terminal 1 of JFK. But today also ties into that announcement in a very significant way, because by having a groundbreaking for Terminal 4, what we were able to do is also start the consolidation to free up Terminal 2 to be part of the other side of the announcement we had earlier this week. So it's all the pieces of the puzzle are fitting together in a beautiful way. So this is really why it's significant to be here. So is it not only a big day for Delta, a big day for JFK, it's also a big day for our state. It's a signal, again, as I mentioned, confidence to let the world know that despite some setbacks that are still with us, that we see a clear path, clear runway toward the future, and that means investing in jobs and opportunities right at this moment. So thank you for being part of this historic day. What we're proposing is a plan that had been talked about before the pandemic, and today we're signaling all the pre-pandemic plans need to be supercharged and acted upon right now. And what we'll be doing is breaking ground on expansion of Terminal 4. It is a $1.5 billion project, and my favorite words are all privately funded. So thank you. <laughs> thank you to Delta. And it's going to completely transform and modernize this terminal. As I said, I think I've worn down part of the carpeting from the countless times I've run between the terminals uh, trying to catch a connection or go back and forth. Those days are soon going to be over. Enhancing the customer experience has always been a hallmark of the Delta philosophy, making sure that the customers uh, have an opportunity to perhaps even enjoy themselves while they're waiting for a connection or as they're rushing to the plane. 
And so we'll have new restaurants and new amenities and a whole different experience where it's all brought together, not one or two terminals, but merged into one beautiful one here at Terminal 4. We're adding 150,000 new square feet. That's incredible. That's incredible. <laughs> 10 new gates. So world, we are ready to accept travelers from around the country, around the globe, right here at our 10 gates for Delta. Also, new baggage experience, the new ticketing experience. Uh, again, we all travel. We have a chance to see what other communities have. I am so proud to be the governor of a state that says that this airport should be the best, not just in the country, but I want this to be a global leading initiative, and that's what we're doing here today. So I thank them. Thank them for their faith in us. But also, not just the investments. I also love the idea that you're creating over 1,000 construction jobs, good-paying union jobs, full public labor, private, uh, private la labor agreements, PLAs. And also, thank you for embracing our desire to have a far more diverse workplace, workforce, and we'll have a 30% MWB requirement that the Port Authority believes in. And I thank the Port Authority for setting the bar so high, and I thank Delta for meeting that bar. We also want to thank the labor leaders, Gary LaBarbera and others, the men and women who will be building this, and those who continued working on projects during the pandemic. This has been a terribly stressful time for so many individuals, especially in the early months when we had no idea whether just going to your job on a construction site or continuing to try and help keep the airlines alive. The people who worked in the washrooms and the ticket counters and the food places all those people were at risk every time they left their homes and went to their jobs, but they never, ever gave up. And so I honor all those workers, all the airport workers, everyone part of this whole ecosystem who had to endure tremendous stress, but they always showed up. And for that, we'll always be grateful. And the JFK Redevelopment Community Advisory Council, headed up by Donovan Richard and Greg Meeks, thank you for caring enough about your community that you show up for so many meetings and advocate for this community that deserves so much more. And Southeast Queens will have more opportunities than they've ever had before in the whole region, Southwest Queens and the Nassau part of it. This is a visionary approach to saying, we're not just building here, we're expanding out the opportunities to people who live here and have to experience what it's like to live near an airport. They should be the ones who get the benefit of this as well. And that's the philosophy that we believe so strongly in. So I do want to thank Delta and everyone who's been a tremendous partner. Your investment in this infrastructure is critical to our success. And Delta, Ed, I want to also commend you for being such incredible corporate citizens. Uh, your philanthropy in this region, your charitable giving is respected and appreciated but also standing up for the causes of our time and standing strongly behind the John Lewis Voting Rights Act as a company. And I applaud that. Here in New York, we honor that. We applaud that courage. And other positions that you've taken that may not always have been popular everywhere else in the country. And if you ever feel you're not getting the love you need in any other state, we got plenty of room for your headquarters. I've said it before. I think I had a tweet on that a few years ago that kind of went viral. I won't bring that up again, but we love Delta here. You're part of our family. And thank you for believing in us the way we believe in you. And this is part of the story of our comeback. Right here, right now, you witnessed this part of history. And just in a very short few years, and we're starting to experience what a whole new vision for JFK looks like, all of you have been part of that beautiful story that launches us into an even better future. So thank you. Thank you. And with that, I'm going to bring up the person who knows how to make magic happen and not only meet our expectations, but exceed them every single time I've had the chance to work with him, our, our leader, Rick Cotton. Thank you, Rick.
Thank you, Governor. This is a very exciting day for the Port Authority, and I'm really delighted to be here. I want to start by acknowledging some very important people who are in the, in the audience. We have Huntley Lawrence, our, the Port Authority's Director of Aviation and Chief Operating Officer. And we have Charles Everett, the General Manager of JFK Airport. We also have from, from Delta, Stephanie Baldwin, Vice President of Delta at JFK Airport. George Guillaume, Director, Delta Airlines at JFK Redevelopment. And while we'll hear from JFK IAT in a moment, uh, Rul Hunink, President and CEO and very strong partner. And I'd also like to recognize, acknowledge all of the Advisory Council members who are here, who made time in their schedule to come here, because they are a very special component of, our, of the Port Authority's efforts to redevelop JFK. And thank you, Governor Hochul, for being here today. It really means a lot in terms of supporting projects like this, which are extremely complicated, as you know, and the support from the top really, really is a key element. Now, this is the second time, actually, this week that you've joined us to celebrate a major milestone in the Port Authority's transformation of JFK. On Monday, you announced that the Port Authority had reached an agreement with a consortium of private investors, private investment, to build a privately financed, and got private three times into that sentence, new Terminal 1. Now today, we're here to celebrate, and it really is a pleasure, we've worked on this for such a long time, another major element in the Port Authority's $18 billion JFK transformation plan. And today's milestone is an actual groundbreaking. Something is really happening. A groundbreaking on a $1.5 billion, with a B, expansion and modernization of Terminal 4. Actual shovels in the ground, We'll do that both literally and figuratively, you'll see at the end of this. Demonstrating the newly found momentum behind the entire Port Authority redevelopment after the pandemic forced a delay of nearly two years. Delta is the primary airline in Terminal 4 and also a partner in JFK IAT who operates Terminal 4, and both of them have been key elements of making this progress. They've been extraordinarily good partners with the port. Ed Bastian, who you'll hear from in a moment, is truly a visionary airline executive who has risen to the challenge of the COVID crisis with extraordinary skill. But Ed has been an extraordinary partner with the Port Authority from really day one when I came to the Port Authority nearly five years ago. He was a major force behind Delta's original investment. He was a major force in recognizing the need to rebuild LaGuardia. But he was also, he made, was part of the decision originally to build Terminal 4, and obviously he is the decision maker behind Delta's investment in the current expansion. Ed, we truly thank you. Schiphol Airport Group, represented by their chair of Schiphol USA, Angela Gittens. Schiphol is the skilled operator of Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam. Also, they are Delta's partner in JFK IAT. And I have to say, they have operated Terminal 4 with great effectiveness and extraordinary creativity, including a major commitment to passenger experience and we thank you and we thank Rule for that.
The expanded Terminal 4, from the Port Authority's perspective, will be a key part of making this airport a 21st century airport. We believe that Terminal 4 will represent the best of what travelers see around the world. It will provide customer amenities, world-class and locally themed restaurants and shops, and we look forward to working close with you as we move into the future. By adding 10 gates to Terminal 4, Delta will be able to move its operations out of Terminal 2, consolidate all its flights here, and that will increase connectivity and the experience of connecting passengers. Now, the project at Terminal 4 is one of four that make up the Port Authority's JFK redevelopment program. This is one of the advantages of, of being at an airport. And it also makes you realize what people who are, the, are in the community who are concerned about noise and why. So as I was saying, there are four parts to the transformation project. On Monday, the governor announced that we had reached an agreement for the construction of a new state-of-the-art Terminal 1 to be built on the south side of the airport. In August, the Port Authority Board approved an agreement with another group of private investors to build a new Terminal 6 on the north side of the airport. And on the west side of the airport, American Airlines is moving quickly as they complete a more than $400 million transformation of Terminal 8. Now, transforming JFK Airport into a world-class facility that will be the world-class international gateway to the United States and to New York, the New York, New Jersey region, it will not be easy. But I hope in this event you can see that it is actually happening. Transformation is not about words. It's about deeds. And we now have two of the four projects in construction. And by the end of next year, we're going to push for the middle of the year, we will have all four projects in construction. It is actually happening. And it is moving forward despite the unprecedented challenge that surrounds us all in these projects of the COVID-19 crisis. When you add up the total private investment across all four projects, it totals $15 billion. That is a five to one return for every dollar the Port Authority spends of scarce Port Authority capital, five dollars of private investment are going into the transformation of JFK. Added together, these projects will create nearly 20,000 good-paying jobs, and they will provide billions of dollars in contract opportunities for MWBEs and for local businesses. So what I want to close with is to talk about our work with the community. We want to make sure that our construction projects benefit the communities who are neighbors to our major projects. We aspire to be a national model and a leader in implementing this commitment. And actually, I believe JFK is a shining light and an extraordinary example of that commitment. From the very start, we have partnered with elected leaders and community leaders in creating the JFK Redevelopment Advisory Council, chaired by Congressman Gregory Meeks and Borough President Donovan Richards. They have simply been phenomenal partners. They advocate for the community, and they have set high ambitions for our efforts. And we are glad for the input, and we're committed to respond. We have embraced the goal of having 30 percent of the spending in the JFK project involve contracts with minority and women-owned businesses. That's the highest in the nation, and we are totally committed to delivering on it. And again, actions, not words. At LaGuardia Airport, the Port Authority has just made the announcement that we have passed $2 billion in MWBE contracts. Yeah. 
We are committed to surpassing that at JFK in working with minority and women-owned businesses. We are committed to capacity building in the community. We are committed to job training. We are committed to supporting the needed education for people to develop careers. We will be prioritizing opportunities for local businesses. We will be prioritizing opportunities for local residents as job seekers. We're bolstered by a community outreach office in the community, and we're guided by advice from the Community Advisory Council. And I'm not sure if Donovan Richards is here yet. I want to thank you for the, for the efforts that you have put into the Advisory Council, the advice you've given me. Some of it I didn't want to hear, but uh, you are really an advocate, and it is so helpful to hear the voices from outside the organization, and I thank you. I also thank Congressman Gregory Meeks, who I think has not yet arrived, but the partnership of the two of you and the other 40 members of the Advisory Council have been critical and will be critical to our future success. So today is a particularly exciting day as we break ground on the $1.5 billion expansion of the new terminal and we advance the overall progress on the Port Authority's JFK redevelopment. So I'd now like to introduce really a remarkable airline executive and a remarkable partner of the Port Authority, CEO of Delta Airlines, Ed Bastian. Well, thank you, Rick. It's uh, really an honor to be here. And it's an honor to be live with people, not looking at a video screen and trying to figure out who's here and who's not. Uh, Governor, thank you for your, your kind and gracious remarks about Delta. Uh, we are honored to serve this important community. And yes, we are headquartered in Atlanta. But many of you know I am a New Yorker, born and raised. And uh, my heart's always here. So I, uh, I'm always proud. Always proud to come, and the great thing is we've had a series of announcements over this last decade in terms of how we're rebuilding New York and giving this great community the resources and the facility and the services it so rightfully deserves on the world stage. Uh, you know, it's hard to believe almost 20 months ago that we'd be standing here. When you think about where we were in the world, how the pandemic uh, caused us all to wonder what the future of air transportation was. And I think it's an enormous credit to every single person in this room for the work you have done, whether you're from Delta and the leaders of Delta, the Port Authority, the state, the community, we've all rallied together and we've held arms and we've pulled each other through. And we're not done yet, but we can see the blue skies coming. And I want to thank you all for what you've done to make this. We don't, we, we're, we're just a piece of this community. Uh, we, we love serving this community, but I want to thank all of you. I think everyone should give each other a big round of applause because it's because of you that we're here today. And we have taken the opportunity, and it was, it's hard to believe it was eight years ago that we opened this facility. It, it seems like it's just yesterday, but, but time, time does fly. And we're now finishing the facility that we, we set out to here with the, with the expansion. It's a good thing we waited because we have a lot more service, a, a lot bigger expansion than we No, Actually, this is the third, third piece of the, of the expansion. Uh, but I'm also really thrilled with what we're doing at LaGuardia, together with Rick and the port. And again, we, we all remember making that announcement back a number of years ago. And uh, it, was a, it was an audacious goal to get LaGuardia rebuilt. I think a lot of people didn't believe it could happen, but with, with some great leadership and insight and skill and, and collaboration amongst the airport community, when we're going to be opening in the spring the, the new Delta facility at the airport, and it truly is world class. And it's something that I think everyone will be very proud of. Uh, because New York is not just the gateway within this country, New York is the gateway to the world. 
and we compete with the world and we want to be a welcoming face to the world and provide the very best tools and technology and services to the world to continue to bring commerce here. Uh, the Delta team, uh, thank you for what you're doing. Stephanie, who leads our, leads our team here, thank you for your leadership. Ryan, where's Ryan? Marzillo? Ryan, Ryan is the real hero of this at Delta. Ryan's our construction leader across. Ryan, stand up. You're the one that should be on the stage, actually. Ryan's leading both JFK and LaGuardia at the same time and bringing them in on spec, on time, and on project. And while uh, I, I, I know you, you love the fact, and I do too, that it's privately financed governor, what I love about it is we're going to be done with this in two years, and it's going to be up and running. So thank you all. I appreciate your support to uh, Delta. And I think, uh, Angela, you're going to follow me to speak. This is Angela Giddens from uh, IAT Skipple. Thank you, Ed, for the introduction. I'm very pleased to join this august group, uh, particularly Madam Governor. Uh, welcome to you. Uh, hopefully, Congressman uh, Meeks will be here. Uh, Executive Director Rick Cotton, who has delivered on what he told us. I was in a conference with you about three years ago and you told us what was going to be happening at the Port Authority airports, and they, these things are indeed happening. So congratulations to you. I have to give a shout out to my old friend Huntley Lawrence, uh, who is now Deputy Executive Director of the Port Authority. No, he's not. <laughs> and to Charles Everett, and please, uh, I ask uh, our president and CEO of JFK IAT to stand uh, because he has been the mastermind uh, behind all of this. He and his team, thank you very much. And Ed, I can outdo you. I was born and raised in New York City, spending the second half of my childhood in St. Albans, which is a stone's throw from JFK. And the first time someone in my family flew on a commercial airline, it was out of the International Arrivals Building, the facility that mercifully was replaced by Terminal 4. So make no mistake about how significant this occasion is to me. As Ed said, more than 20 years ago, JFK IAT was selected by the Port Authority to become the first private operator of the newly redeveloped Terminal 4. Leveraging our expertise in air terminal operations, the mission was to make it one of the world's most modern and efficient air terminals and to provide a best-in-class customer journey at New York's gateway to the world. And as we've already heard, today we are taking another momentous step forward to achieve that mission as we embark on yet another significant expansion to increase T4's capacity, complete significant renovations, and welcome Delta Airlines consolidation within the terminal, giving us an opportunity to continue to work together to provide a customer-focused experience. Delta has a long and proud tradition of excellence in customer service that fits in so well with the Skipple value system. In addition to an expansion of T4's physical space, this project represents an expansion of JFK's ongoing mission to elevate the customer experience. We will continue to invest in our operations, contactless technologies, sustainability initiatives, and much more. Following on the exciting announcement of the new Terminal 1 earlier this week, the expansion of T4 is in line with the Port Authority's ambition to make John F. Kennedy International Airport the world-class 21st century global gateway that New York City deserves. In the wake of the pandemic, JFK IAT has continued to partner with the Port Authority, Delta, and our other business partners to prioritize the safety of our customers and employees. The focus is the way forward 
to restoring customer confidence in air travel. And as we expand our operations, the safety, security, and well-being of everyone who enters T4 will remain the highest priority. This project also represents a significant investment in Queens and a tremendous opportunity for New York City. As a local Queens-based business, JFK IIT has supported the local community through For Good, a philanthropic program to promote educational, social, and professional success for residents and businesses in the Bureau and the Borough. As the expansion of T4 gets underway, JFK will continue to support this program and work with the Port Authority and local partners to seek new pathways for community development initiatives, for job opportunities, and for workforce development programs. On behalf of Schiphol USA and JFK IIT, we are very proud to be part of this initiative and I look forward to all of the exciting developments to come. So I thank you and I thank you and many thanks to the Port Authority for giving us the opportunity to serve this great city. And now let me introduce Borough President Donovan Richards. Well, is it morning or afternoon? I can't keep up. Uh, but good afternoon, everyone. Today is truly a historic day for Queens. In fact, this entire week, Madam Governor, has been one that has changed Queens for the better, especially trying to come out of this pandemic. On Monday, I had the honor of joining Governor Hochul to announce a massive $9.5 billion project to, to build a brand new state-of-the-art terminal, one right here down the road here at JFK. And here we are again, Madam Governor, on Wednesday. You love Queens. It must be something about Queens. There's something in the water in Queens. Now we're here building on that with a $1.5 billion overhaul of Terminal 4. This is probably the most excited I've ever been to trek down to JFK outside of getting on a Delta plane to head to some island. And I can't wait to be down here again for even more groundbreakings and ribbon cuttings in the future. Today would not certainly be possible without some great partners. And let me start off by thanking the incredible Rick Cotton and his team at the Port Authority for the tireless work they do each and every day. Not only are they neck deep in planning multiple historic projects all at once, they actually have some of the busiest airports in the country to run each day. Now, Rick Cotton said on Monday that I was the reason his hair turned white. Turns out, Rick, I don't have any hair left because of you. Where's Hirsch as well? Hirsch as well. Thank you, Hirsch. But working shoulder to shoulder with him has led us here today. And there are fewer better partners in government than him. So thank you, Rick, for your leadership and partnership. Governor Hochul, you also deserve tremendous credit for helping shepherd in these projects and other projects along uh, in other airports as well, our other airport. We wouldn't be here without you, and I want to sincerely thank you for your partnership. To the entire Delta team, your massive investment in our borough of Queens has not gone unnoticed or unappreciated. You realize that Queens is the future of New York City and that the talent of our people is unmatched. And we wouldn't be more excited to work with you as we build this project out. Last week, I had the pleasure of being at an MWBE seminar with hundreds of business owners hoping to secure projects with this contract. And seeing your support and commitment to uplifting our MWBEs, not only in words but with action, tells me this project is going to be a successful one. If there are proverbial walls between the airport and the community, 
that surrounds it, both will suffer and neither will succeed. But it's when we break down these barriers and welcome the community into the project do we see the kind of success we know we're capable of. And I want to thank the JFK Advisory Board. I see many members here. I see we're also joined by Assembly Member Clyde Vanell as well. That means a commitment to local hiring, job training, workforce development, and most importantly, union labor. We need good jobs. That means ensuring our local businesses right here in Southeast Queens are the ones getting these lucrative contracts. That means the food people that, that means the food people from all corners of the globe are eating once they land is the product of a Queens restaurant and that the art they see as they walk the halls was made by a Queens artist. It's only right. I myself live in a flight path not far from here in Rosedale. The thousands of families who call this community home bear the brunt of plane noise, airport traffic, and pollution. And the people in Southeast Queens, most importantly, deserve to have the benefits from this project because as I said Monday, people of Southeast Queens aren't looking for a handout. They're looking for a hand up. And this is what the entire redevelopment of this airport provides. If we are truly serious about equity and creating pathways to the middle class, then we need to make sure no one feels the need to leave Queens to find a good paying job. We need to make sure these are the families who should be most impacted in a positive way by this project. I believe the Port Authority and Delta are serious about all of this and more. But rest assured, I'll be here every step of the way with my colleague and co-chair, Congressman Gregory Meeks, to ensure that that happens. Queens is the front door not just to New York City and New York State, but the entire United States of America. The airport is here in this borough, the world's borough. When you come through Queens, we need you to know that this is the best airport in the best borough in the best city in the world. But hold up, don't clap. We don't want you running off to Manhattan quickly. We want you to eat, drink, breathe, and experience Queens in all its glory. That's why this project is so important to this borough. So once again, I thank Governor, uh, Governor Hochul's office and the Port Authority for their commitment to Queens and putting their money where their mouth is. We're talking about more than $20 billion invested into our two airports, giving us a pair of world-class facilities that are some of the biggest economic drivers in the state. It's exactly what we've been advocating for in Queens, and on days like today, it's so thrilling to see that advocacy come to pass with shovels in the dirt. Thank you, Delta, for helping us get to here today. I can't work, wait to work with you moving forward. Thank you and congratulations to all. I was trying to buy time for Congressman Meeks. Uh, but Queens is the future and keep spending your money here. Thank you, thank you, God bless you all. And now we're ready to break some ground. Please remain seated if you're in attendance during the groundbreaking. Thank you. Fly me to the moon. 